What's up, internet? It's been a while. Here's a bunch of random After Effects tips to hopefully speed up your workflow. Okay, so I kind of made this dummy project up just to uh, illustrate a couple points. Everything in this video is not scripted and I'm just talking off the top of my head. And a lot of this stuff is not really a secret. A lot of people know it, but people forget that these things exist. So I wanted to talk about them and uh, shed some light on them for newcomers. The first one being compositing options, one of my favorite things to do. Uh, so typically, uh, if you wanted to affect a specific part of an asset, for instance, this castle, I just got this off the internet. If I wanted to darken the bottom of it only, I couldn't simply grab an exposure effect and throw it on my castle. It would affect the whole layer. Obviously, that's not what we want. And the other problem too is I couldn't create an adjustment layer for the exposure effect and bring it down because it brings down the whole image. Now, some people who are just getting into After Effects would be like, well, I could just, you know, leave the adjustment layer on, draw a mask or whatever, and that'll do it, but it's time consuming. It's not really that accurate either. So what's the solve? Well, a lot of people will tell you pre-compose it. So you'll pre-compose, move all attributes to new comp, and then in that pre-comp, you'll create an adjustment layer. You'll basically do a lot of the same things, but because you have the castle on its own, it allows you to affect only the areas that you need without affecting the background. Now, this absolutely works and you can totally do this, but there is a sneaky little feature that not a lot of people know about and it's called compositing options. So if you drag an effect onto a layer, so in this case, we're using exposure and I, let's say I bring this down a lot just so we can see it. If I draw a mask on this side and I twirl down the effects panel here, at the bottom of any effect, there's this little tab called compositing options. If you hit the plus button, you can designate a mask for that effect. And you'll know that it's working because there's this little blue icon that shows up. And as you can see, the mask that we drew is affecting just that effect. Super, super nifty. Did I say nifty? What am I, 50? Okay, all these options work. Feather, you can animate the mask, do whatever you need. And it really, really speeds things up. Uh, you can use multiple masks. So let's say I wanted to darken the bottom and then throw a hue and saturation adjustment for the top. I could still twirl down hue and saturation and compositing options, designate mask two, and now I've done it to the top. So really, really handy. I will say it, it can get finicky the more masks you throw on. I think it has something to do with the computation perhaps or the way that the masks interact with the layer but whatever the case it's really good to know uh, it saved me a lot of time i use it all the time all the time so moving on uh, another thing that a lot of people forget exists is expression linking between comps so i'm gonna just quickly reset this comp here so let's say you have two comps right let's say you have uh i'm gonna put them side by side so we can see them i'm gonna lock this guy I'm gonna put this guy here. There we go. Now we can see everything. So let's say you have comp A. Uh, let me get rid of this. They're similar layers that we wanna control. And uh, let's say we want this layer in comp B to be controlled by this layer in comp A. Let's twirl down the properties here. As long as you have properties that match or have similar numerical values, you can control them. So I can alt click on the position stopwatch here for position and drag it from comp B to comp A and click off and now if I move this one in comp A, it moves in comp B. It's uh, really efficient if you have a lot of layers and a lot of comps that have to rely on one another. This is super handy because it means you can control one layer and one master comp and it'll affect a bunch of layers. Like I said, you can also do this with numerical values that are the same. So scale is uh, zero to 100 and opacity is zero to 100. So I can alt click on my opacity, link it to the scale in a completely different comp on a completely different layer. And if I scale this down, the opacity will come down on this layer, which is super cool. It's a bunch of random different things. You'll find this technique used a lot in template projects that you'd buy off like VideoHive or something. So uh, definitely keep that in mind if you wanna make some of those, that's super helpful. There's like a master layer with all of the effects linked. Uh, I don't know if I said it, but Quick tip for you, if you didn't know, you can press return on the keyboard and like, I don't know, rename any effect to whatever you want. Helps keep things organized and uh, tidy. I'm a big fan of organization. As you can tell by my uh, bin over here, <laughs> I designate any pre-comp with a PC 
and uh, just comps are comps. Anyway, that's not important. The Shy Guy in After Effects is super handy, especially if you have a ton of layers in your comp. So for example, uh, these red layers, let's say I don't wanna see them anymore, or I'm done working with them. There's this little uh, man with a nose, I think. I don't, like maybe he's looking over a fence, kind of creepy looking. If you toggle these for all of these layers and you press the Shy Guy icon in the comp, they'll just go away. They'll just clear out the timeline for you just so that you can create a little bit of space and you can know that they're there because there's this like darker line that shows up. Uh, again, none of this is like groundbreaking stuff. It's been around for a long, long time, but a lot of people don't use it and I feel like it's super handy. Another feature in After Effects that I really like to use is the align window. Uh, I use it constantly in motion graphic-y stuff, especially when I wanna get really precise placement on layers. So I can select all of these layers and align them horizontally maybe so that they're all kind of in line with the comp and then I can distribute them amongst one another and you have flexibility here so you can align them to the selection or the composition, whatever floats your boat. Uh, I just align them all together, which is why that happened. Here, let me do this. I can select all of these and distribute them and now I have an even distribution across the entire comp that I know for a fact is accurate. Really fun tool, really enjoy using that one. So another thing I wanna demonstrate is that you can work on image sequences as they're rendering out of a 3D software. You don't have to wait for the whole thing to load. Um, so I put together this quick scene in Maya. It's just a cube, plane, and a simple camera move. Uh, so I'm gonna set this bad boy to render. Camera one, I'll render there's a render sequence. Okay, it's going. So if we're in After Effects, you can see them populating right here. I just select the first one, open EXR sequence rendering, and right here, it says 15. I can drop this into a new comp. I'm gonna extend this comp to like two minutes or 20 minutes, whatever, just so that we can see this happening. So you can see I imported their 15 frames. I can right click, reload footage. Look at that. All of it keeps populating. And if we go to where it's rendering, you can clearly see it's still rendering. Like frames are still being made. And I could still add, you know, hue and saturation. I could start changing colors. I could start working with things. And yeah, all I have to do to update the comp is just reload the footage and more frames will populate. So that's really handy. You don't have to wait for you know, a 500 frame sequence or a thousand frame sequence, you can start working on it right away and get looks going and effects going. Another thing I like to do when I'm working on projects and I'm doing like really repetitive effects over and over again is make effects presets. So uh, for example, if I am constantly using a human saturation and I'm changing the colors and I'm changing the exposure, uh, I can add that on, let's see do that and let's add a glow Ooh, if I could spell glow drop that on so let's say I use this a lot and I really like it I can select all of these go to animation save animation preset and I can call this test or I can call this I don't know test preset I can hit save and now if I delete these guys and I come to my effects and presets panel and I type in test preset, you can see it there. Boom, all my effects show up. Super fast, super easy. I use it all the time. Another note too about presets is it isn't just effects that you can preset, you can also preset keyframes. So let's say uh, I set a keyframe for the position, I go forward a few frames, I come down, I go forward. Okay, so let's say I want this to become a preset. All I have to do to make this work is highlight those keyframes and I go to animation, same scenario as the last one and save animation preset and we can call this janky move, whatever. So if you look down here in the position, I just quickly deleted them. If I type that preset janky move and I paste it, all of the position keyframes are applied just as I had them. You can use this with pretty much anything. I like to use this with glitch effects a lot to get really consistent movements. Again, all of these are just efficiency hacks, I guess. None of it's a secret. This is stuff that's been around for a long time, but it really helps me. I use these tools and tips every day, and I just really wanted to share them. I really wanted to make a video and uh, show people that these things exist. 
assuming they don't know already. Let's say you want to animate the castle moving from, I don't know, down here and you want it to loop around and you want it to come this way. Obviously you could do it uh, with just position keyframes and it would be fine, it would take a little while, but you could also draw a mask path. Like let's say this is the path I want it to take. After you draw the mask, twirl it down, go to the path, copy it, and now go to the position of whatever layer you want it to affect and you paste it on the position. And now that bad boy is doing what it needs to do. And of course, the keyframes kind of get pasted arbitrarily in terms of speed. So all you have to do to adjust that is hold alt with the playhead at the first keyframe, click on the last one while holding alt and drag it out. And now you can control the speed. Yay. Here's a tracking tip for you. Let's say you're having a hard time tracking a shot. What you could do is you could pre-treat it by adding, I don't know, uh, more contrast to the image and sharpening it up, you know, kind of uh, really get a lot of the detail out of it. Then you can pre-compose it and then you can track on top of the pre-composed item. This is something that's super common, been around forever, but uh, alt replace is awesome. It's super simple. You just uh, click on the asset that you wanna replace and then you hold alt or option if you're on a Mac and then you click and drag the asset you wanna replace it with and you see how the cursor changes. Boom, you just replaced an asset with another and it takes on all the properties and animation that were there before. One thing I really wanna show you guys are the painting tools in After Effects. Uh, I feel like these are super underrated and people don't talk about them enough. I love painting in After Effects when I'm doing cleanup work because I think it's just really fast. Uh, so what you can do is you double click whatever you wanna paint. In this case, uh, I have this footage clip here from Pexels. Let's say I want to, I don't know, paint something on the table. You double click on your footage, which opens up the layer window. And if you hit Control B or Command B, you have the brush settings. And if you press Alt, you can see that it changes to either the uh, eyedropper. If you hit Command B again, it changes to the clone stamp tool. If you hit Command B again, it changes to the uh, eraser tool, eraser. Uh, so I'm just gonna keep hitting Command B to get back to that clone. But let's say I'm on the first frame and say I paint this out, right? I'm gonna do a really bad job just for the sake of this example. And I wanna make sure that my clone stamps are just a single frame, obviously they are. So if I go to the next frame, I could do the same thing. I could sample this area and paint it. Or I could go to the frame that I cleaned, sample the frame that I cleaned, go forward a frame and then paint. I love using this technique, especially when I have limited things to work with on screen. It helps to go back and for consistency's sake, get paint from a layer that I've already painted, just to kind of really minimize paint wobble and boiling that you kind of get by hand painting. It's really helpful. Uh, and don't forget to use your opacity settings to really blend things. I use them all the time. People don't talk about the paint tools in After Effects enough, and I freaking love them. I use them all the time, especially for cleanup. Ignore, ignore the fact that this clone stroke that I did looks jank. Uh, it was just to illustrate a point. Another thing too is after you've made a paint stroke and you've messed up, you can still like adjust the positioning and rotation and you can even animate this stuff if you wanted to. So many options with paint in After Effects that it's just super cool. Yeah, I know you can do a lot of this in Nuke too, but a lot of After Effects users, I feel like aren't using the paint tools in After Effects enough. So I gotta preach about them. Here's another really random after Effects feature that I'm not really sure why it exists, but let's say you're in the layer window and you draw a shape around this laptop, right? If you set a keyframe for that mask, you go forward a frame and in the layer window, right here where it says target, if you change it to mask one, with the pen tool still selected, you can redraw the mask, go forward a frame, redraw the mask, and if you, go back, you can see that it's keyframe to the new things that you drew. So it's kind of like going frame by frame and like redrawing the mask. If you change it to none, you can see it. So here we're gonna go forward a frame. I'm gonna redraw it. I'm gonna go forward a frame, redraw it. 
I don't know when you would use this tool, uh, but it's there if you need it. It's something that I have used once to roto and it just was super inefficient. So I, uh, I don't use it, but I wanted to show people that that feature exists in case they might need it for something. There might be the 1% uh, situation where you might use that. Another cool feature to point out with masks, uh, you can use them to track, which a lot of people don't know that you can do. So I'll draw a shape around this laptop screen, for example. And this doesn't really matter, but I just set it to none for the sake of this example. If you right click on the mask and click on track mask, you'll get these features on the right. You can select from all these different options. Perspective gives you kind of like a 2D track or not a 2D track, a 2.5D track, sorry. And uh, if you track forward, the mask will do its thing and do its best to track whatever you designated. Uh, really similar to how Mocha works. So I'm just gonna stop it real quick. And if you hit you on the keyboard, you see you get all of these keyframes. So it's kind of like it's done the roto for you. And of course, if you change it to add, it'll uh, it'll do its thing. So pretty cool feature. I highly recommend using it. Uh, I think it's helpful in a lot of ways. Uh, another feature with masks, I'm gonna actually bring in another video to illustrate this. These are all from Pexels, by the way. Uh, let's say I draw a shape around this guy's face. I can right click on the mask, obviously, to bring up the tracker and I can set it to uh, detailed features only. Set pose, track forward. And the mask will automatically track the face of the person that I designated and give me all of these interesting features that I can then use for like uh, puppeteering with like cartoons and facial mocap. This is a feature that I think is really, really cool that a lot of people don't use enough of. After Effects has come such a long way and it's so packed with different tools and features that really help artists that, I mean, this will always be in my toolbox. I've been using After Effects since I was 14 and I don't think I could ever not use it. I use a ton of other programs too, but I, I use After Effects every day and I, I think I've used it every day for 16 years. As After Effects improves, I can only imagine how much more powerful it's gonna get. So yeah, I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna extract and copy face measurements and bringing up you on the keyboard, you can see all of these keyframes for points that have been tracked on the face. Really awesome and useful tool. So there you go. There are a bunch of random After Effects tips, tricks, techniques. Again, it wasn't very organized. I just wanted to make a video and show you guys a bunch of stuff. Uh, I am actually making more videos. Hopefully they'll be out soon. Who knows, I'm not gonna make promises this time. Uh, I'm always busy, but uh, I really, really love YouTube and I really like sharing VFX stuff. I like talking about VFX, VFX is awesome. If this video was helpful, give it a like, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Also, go check out my other videos, I need views. Hey.